Hi everyone, my name is Kevin Mayberry and I'm a Managing Director in the Consulting Division of Wristband, headquartered in Tyson's Corner, Virginia in Stanford, Connecticut. And today I'm going to talk to you about sound financial model development using Microsoft Excel. Now, as we all know, in today's financial arena, and in particular as a result of the credit crisis, models have undergone much more increased scrutiny than ever before, especially by government regulation via the Dodd-Frank Act, by agencies such as the FHFA and the OCC, just to name a couple. Now, based on this information, there are two things in today's model environment that they need to have. Now, the first is strong controls, and the second is a very high degree of transparency. And if you can have these two things, your models will be much more easy to use and understand from the analyst up to the management's perspective. You won't have this concept of a black box where you have to figure out what the formulas are since they'll be exposed and open. And thirdly, they'll be easily auditable, both from an internal audit perspective as well as your external auditors, which, as we all know, is something that we need in today's environment. Well, our wristband solution is to meet these objectives is based on a foundation of constructing the model given six components. Now the first five components we're going to talk about today and they are as follows. One is have a navigation page. The second is the reading of the inputs. The third is having an open set of calculations so we call it a calculation engine. The fourth are the development of the outputs and then the fifth is the actual code that does the batch processing in the model. Now the sixth one which we have in all our model engagements which we feel is equally as important as the first five are outside of the model, and that's the development and the creation of sound, comprehensive model methodology documentation. Now, what I'd like to do with you is I'd like to turn you to the model that we have up here, and let's go through that. Now, the example model we have up here is a best execution whole and modification model, and the purpose of this model is to assist a lender who has, say, a given pool of sub- and or non-performing loans with the best course of action to perform on each loan, now, whether that's by way of the government modification HAMP program, or maybe they want to foreclose and eventually liquidate on that loan, or maybe they have their own less restrictive custom modification programs that they'd want to put the borrower through. And the determining factor that will be used to decide what's the best course of action on a loan level basis will be based on an economic net present value given a set of prepayment, liquidation, default assumptions, and discount rate. So now at this point, let's get back to our wristband five-component approach here, and let me address that. Now, as you'll see, this front screen here is our navigation screen. And in essence, this is like the control panel of an airplane or more appropriately, a roadmap for the model. And if you want to click any of these buttons, you can navigate and guide yourself to each each tab of the model and come back to the home screen or navigation screen as necessary. Uh, you can run the model via the code. And there are also a set of global assumptions that you can enter in here. Um, now, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to pretend we're the analyst and we have this new pool of 50 loans and we're going to enter that information. Um, and as going through this process, relate it back to the controls and the transparency as I originally discussed. So with that in mind, the analyst would first enter, in this case, the collateral screen. And what you will notice right off of the bat is that all of our input cells, in this case would be the collateral and credit characteristics, have a uniform designated color coding style. For now, we have this as a blue font with a yellow background. Any other formula or output will not have this, this color coding. The secondly, another control is we have these data limitation and logic values. So if you're in the OP, the original principal balance, and you wanted to enter a negative value, you wouldn't be able to do that, nor would you be able to enter, say, a letter, as an example. So another level of protection. The third, the third thing here is that if you are not in an input cell and you want to enter a particular value in, say, a blank cell or formula, all of our cells are locked, which, presents, which prevents the analyst from making any mistakes or messing up one of the formulas or something along those lines. I think the last thing to discuss here is that you just don't have to enter manual inputs where the analyst would type in this information or even copy-paste these loan characteristics from a different Excel file into this one. 
we can link to an underlying SQL database. We can connect to XML files, flat files, access databases, you name it. It's really based on what the client wants. So if we go back and now we'll enter into the table input. Again, the same style. The inputs are color coded so they're all uniform. Everything else is not. Uh, this particular tab itself shows for, a foreclosure and liquidation uh, and expense assumptions on a state-based level. This will be used more so for the liquidation scenario actually. The next screen we have here is entering in your interest rate forward curves or you can enter flat curves if you want. Like the collateral input screen and our other screens, you don't just have to manually enter your values here. In this case, if you wanted to link to Bloomberg.com, uh, you could do that uh, and enter in those forward curves from that basis as well. The next screen we have would be uh, our modification parameters. The particular inputs related to this example model are related to the eligibility requirements and requirements of, say, the, the government program, uh, as well as if the lender wants to just run a customized, less restrictive modification scenario, he can do that. In this case, we've just said, here's one parameter, just make sure that your DTI front end would be 31%. Now, incidentally, these are not necessarily set in stone. The beauty of Excel is that it is a very customizable tool. So we can adjust these inputs, we can adjust the formulas, however the client wants that. And with rolling in our controls and our, our high degree of transparency, this makes for a strong solution. But customization is definitely one of the beauties of Excel if you use it correctly. The next tab here would be entering in your discount rates used to present value back your projected flows in your modification and your liquidation scenarios. In this case, we decided just to stratify it by vintage uh, as well as product type. Uh, for this example, we're just going to use a flat. We're just going to use a flat discount rate. The next two scenarios relate to your HPI assumptions. Now. In the navigation screen, we decided to select using Moody's Analytics Economy.com. That would relate to this particular tab. Again, going back to the same consistent theme, the same type of color coding related to all the inputs. In this case, these are MSA level HPI projections. You can upload these from some sort of underlying database or vendor system that that may be associated with uh, extract or providing the Moody's HPI curves or some sort of other extract. It's really what the client wants. However, if you didn't want to use economy.com and wanted to use a custom HPI scenario, that could be accommodated too. We just decided to put in one example growth rate curve, same concept, manual inputs if they want to play with it, or some sort of upload capability. But Let's just step back to using the economy.com scenario, as we said before, just for this particular run. Now, the last of the inputs would be, we call them here, your modification scenarios. And this is really, how is your loan going to react when you modify it? How is the borrower going to react from a prepayment and, a, say, a default perspective? Hopefully, not too adversely. But the way we broke this particular uh, set of inputs up is breaking it out by delinquency status as well as mortgage rate reduction of the modified loan. So now the analyst has entered in all their inputs and the calculation engines, what I'm going to show you here, starting with government modification, is right off the bat you can see the level of transparency that we have. Nothing is hidden in terms of formulas, in terms of understanding a methodology as well. This particular engine is showing you if you were to go through this government program, A, would it be eligible, and B, if it was eligible, what would the new modified terms be based on the NPV methods, cash flow, the NVPP, NPV methods, excuse me, waterfall. And this is broken out into steps here. You would do it by a target DTI, reducing by interest rate, by term, and then by forbearing principle. Um, Again, the other thing that we like to do is the ability to troubleshoot. It goes back to the theme of transparency. This is a loan level iterative model with 50 loans. So if you wanted to dig down on the loan level to see what the reaction would be of, in this case, say the first loan, 
you could type that in here. On, we like to, on your left-hand columns, kind of pull in all the summary information that we had from our collateral input screen. So you can see what your starting point is. And then from here, see how these inputs flow through, in this case, the waterfall, and thus the calculations to get your resulting modified terms. Now the next scenario that we have is the liquidation scenario. And again, we have the exact same theme as we do in all of other screens. Uh, controlled inputs, in this case there's only one input. Uh, the transparency, being able to see the calculations, and in addition, not just the calculations, but the methodology itself. We try to lay that out in a nice clear format. In this case, we read in the loan information of the first loan. We figure out what the net debt liquidation needs to be. We have the discount rate assumptions, the actual net proceeds and associated losses, and the, and the corresponding uh, principal net recovery. What are your timeline assumptions? What are your HPI assumptions, and how does that lay to your future appraisal value? And your eventual answer for this, which is a net present value. The next scenario is going to be, we're going to skip modification engine and go into custom modification engine and then roll back. Your custom modification engine carries the same theme and this relates to the lender who may have a custom program. And as we said, that front end DTI target is 31% without all the limitations of the HAMP program. So if we keep with our first loan as an example, we'll change the 50 to a 1. All of that summary information pulls up and say the bank only wants to adjust one of the mortgage terms, either amortization term, note rate, or principal forgiveness. Each of those are laid out here, and you have a resulting set of what your modified terms are. Now, stepping back and going to the modified engine, this engine, in this example model, is where you take those modified loan terms from your government modification scenario, as well as your custom modification scenarios, and you enter them in here. So carrying with our first loan example, this will pull up some information, but then what the VBA code would do, again, Visual Basic for Applications, the Excel code that's used, the Excel programming language, would uh, copy the modified terms for each modified loan, place that in here, your, your set of cash flows would be projected and a discount rate to present value back those cash flows. So at this point, the inputs were uploaded by the analysts and the calculation engines as shown here are shown for the purpose of transparency, troubleshooting, and, and things like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run the model and just a quick discussion of the approach. When you run the model, uh, normally, all our codes will read the inputs in first, we'll pass them through the calculation engines, and we'll create a resulting output. It's really more like a batch processing. We do not like to put any of our formulas into the run. So let's run this. And what you'll also know, which is what we like to call feedback. We always like to give you real-time feedback. Where in the process is the model running? And of course, when the model is complete with a little message box, as opposed to keeping it a mystery where you actually don't know if the model is running, you don't know if it's done yet. So we'll press OK on this. And this is our resulting loan level analysis, like I said, on a loan by loan basis for the analyst or the manager to come in and actually see what kind of decision they want to make, at least on an economic basis, for what is the best course of action to run in each loan. Now if we take the first loan as an example, we find that, at least from the yellow shading, that the highest NPV is based on modifying it via the government program, 76 cents in the dollar, uh, approximately. So now once the model is complete, we'll click on OK, and we get to the output report. In this case, it's a loan level report that shows you the net present value of each scenario that you've decided to run, and the highest net present value of that will determine your best course of action, at least from an economic perspective. So if we use our first loan again as an example, what we'll note here is that the government scenario is actually the highest net, yields the highest net present value at 76 cents in the dollar, whereas the liquidation scenario yields 56 cents in the dollar. 
And if you wanted to look at the customized scenarios, you'd find that the next highest would actually be the reduction of the interest rate and that yields to about 60, 63 cents in the dollar. So again, this is something that an analyst could come into or a manager could come into and get a clear picture right away. One of the other nice things here in terms of customization and areas such as that is if you wanted to export this report, we could have the capability give you the capability to export the report into any kind of format that you wanted. Again, those flat files, database files, XMLs, etc. So in conclusion, we at RiskSpan feel that Excel models, they're here to stay in the financial industry. It's almost as if they're their own legacy system in their own right. But we also know that the key to sound model development Excel is having the strong controls and a high degree of transparency. And our solution, we feel, definitely offers that. So now if you have any other questions or comments or feedback or would like to learn more, please email me at your convenience at kmayberry at riskspan.com and I will be happy to talk to you about anything or give you any other details you may like. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you again next time.